Hello, and welcome to our first animated access technology showcase. We hope you enjoy everything we have to show. In this first episode we will be talking about The launch of the Apple iPad Microsoft's Windows 7 operating system The launch of the One Voice business case for accessibility The latest news on Microsoft's project Natal And of course a roundup of all the latest assistive technology news but first, we've been in Barcelona with the BrainAble project to look at the latest developments in brain control of technology. In this video, Veronica is trying out a non-invasive technology to control a spanning keyboard to spell her name. You can see that she is wearing a cap through which sensors are attached to her scalp to read the patterns of her thoughts. After 15 minutes practice she is able to select letters from the keyboard with a fair degree of accuracy. We spoke to her after the session, she told us that the hardest things about using the technology were the amount of concentration she needed and getting the electro gel out of her hair. This technology is beginning to become a very real option for people with a range of disabilities, especially physical needs. The trial groups will include people who have acquired their disability through an accident, or through a condition such as ALS or motor neurone disease, and also people who have been living with a disability from birth, such as those with cerebral palsy. The technology is being designed not only to support communication through synthesized speech, but also as means of controlling devices in the physical environment. Imagine being able to close doors, open curtains, select a TV channel, by choosing them from a range of options just by thinking. Even more than this, is the potential to use the tools, to interact with people in virtual worlds such as Second Life, as well as more traditional social networks such as Facebook. We spoke to AbilityNet's David Baines about the project. Hi guys, yeah, it's great to talk about BrainAble. One of the things that is really interesting about this new technology is not only is it a technology that's going to give people who are otherwise denied access a new way to communicate and control the environment, but it's also something that blends with existing technologies. So where people find that for some of the time there are limitations with using their eyes or using their voice or using a switch, brain technology can enhance what already exists and therefore give them a continuous access that otherwise wouldn't be impossible for them. I'm really still very excited by the opportunities here. That's fantastic Dave, we really look forward to hearing more in the future. We certainly do, and let's carry on by looking at another new technology, the announcement by Apple of their new baby the iPad. The iPad is one of the most discussed technologies in 2010. Let's have a look at this new tablet from Apple with PC Magazine. Hi, I'm Tim Gideon with PC Magazine in San Francisco at the launch of Apple's tablet, the iPad. Despite its 9.7 inch screen, the iPad is only a half inch thick. Its lower panel has a 30 pin connector for syncing with your computer and to the right, a built-in speaker. Up top, there's an earphone jack and a mic and a power button. And on the right, a volume rocker and mute button. Browsing with iPad's version of Safari is similar to the experience on an iPhone, only since the screen's bigger, the toolbar's pull-down menus don't hide the screen's content. Probably the biggest addition is iBooks, the ebook functionality we all knew was coming. Page turns look really cool, and horizontal view shows two pages at once. Behind the virtual bookshelf, there's a store with New York Times bestsellers you can buy in what looks like a very quick manner, although we were not able to demo it yet. Major book publishers have signed on for iBooks, and this could spell some serious trouble for other manufacturers. EA's first-person car racing game Need for Speed turns the iPad not only into a 9.7-inch 3D gaming experience, but into a virtual steering wheel. Gaming developers have a faster processor and a larger touch surface to work with now. Of course, old apps work just fine on the big screen, but apps optimized for iPad, like the New York Times easing version of its paper, are on the way. Google Maps' current location feature was a hit. It finds you, allows you to type something into the virtual keyboard like lunch, and then lunch spots pop up nearby you on the map. You can go into Street View, and it looks pretty awesome on the screen. 
The photo experience is best for Apple computer owners. It syncs with their iPhoto library. You can search by events, faces, places, or albums. It's really easy to see every photo in a group when you pinch and expand. And of course, high-res images look great on that big screen. Watching video is an engrossing experience. Tapping the screen will bring up controls and switch from full HD mode to zoom in and fill the whole screen if you want. But I recommend looking into one of these cases. The iPad is 1.5 pounds. Holding it for a long time can be a little awkward and these cases act as kickstands. But more so than the case, the dock with keyboard seem to get the most oohs and ahs in the accessory department. The iPod on the iPad looks a little bit different than it does on the iPhone or the iPod Touch. The interface resembles iTunes on your computer more than it does anything on those devices. The iPad is powered by a custom Apple chip, the A4, and AT&T's 3G network will still be available in $15 or $30 monthly plans. All models have 802.11 Wi-Fi. The 16 gig version is 499, 32 gig version 599, and 64 gig version 699. But tack on 130 bucks to each of those if you want the 3G version, which hits stores in April. The Wi-Fi only iPad should be here in March. I'm Tim Gideon for PC Mag. Come back to us in the coming weeks for a full review. With a combination of touch direct access and Apple's voice over screen reader, there is real interest in the possibility of this device as a communication aid and as a recording device or ebook reader. We are looking forward to trying one in the wild as soon as they are available. Moving on. Last year, Microsoft released Windows 7, the latest version of their dominant operating system. If you didn't know about all of the access options that are available in Windows 7, Here's a demonstration from Microsoft to tell you all about it. Windows 7 comes with the Ease of Access Center, which allows you to change visual, auditory, and manual settings on your computer. This makes using your computer easier for you or someone else in your world. Hi, my name's Allie. Let me show you how it's done. To find the Ease of Access Center, open the Start menu and search for Ease. When you click Ease of Access Center, you can see a list of features that you can easily adjust. Ever have trouble reading tiny text on your screen? Well, you can use the magnifier, a new feature in Windows 7. Click Start Magnifier, and you can zoom in and out using the plus or minus buttons. Or, just drag your cursor in the direction of the text that you'd like to magnify. To get out of the magnifier, just click the red X. Do you ever lose track of your cursor? You can also make the mouse easier to use from the Ease of Access Center. Just select from a variety of colors and sizes and click Apply. You can also talk to your computer in every application, from email to Media Center to Microsoft Office. To get started, search for Speech in the Start menu and click on Windows Speech Recognition. The first time you do this, you'll have to go through a couple steps to get set up. Once you do, a window will pop up at the top of your screen. Click on the microphone icon to get started. Now you can control your computer through a series of commands. Start Microsoft Word. Isn't this great? Question mark. And when you're ready for your computer to stop listening, just click the microphone icon again. I know that Windows 7 is definitely Dave's operating system of choice. That's right, guys. And we haven't even seen the on-screen keyboard, word prediction or touch integration. Those are for next month.